It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop ever until you are dead. Awesome. There will definitely be links in the video description. Now, Aaron, you yes. have you've got a, a campaign going on right now. Wraith of God. Yeah, rocking. Uh, super duper, uh, you know, uh, successful. You've already met your goal, exceeded it by a whole lot. It's come with it a little bit of controversy. You've been under the fire, but you've handled it well. It looks like yeah. the, the campaign is going to be a mammoth success. What can you tell us about Wrath of God? And if people want to support it on Indiegogo exclusively, I believe, how yes. can they do that? Well, um, <clears throat> I wish I had the little, uh, you know, you spend so much time trying to, like when you're doing a pitch, right? And Roland knows this as well, yeah. that you have to, you got, oh, I got this story. It's this long. Now I got to do this so I can get what it out in like 30 right. seconds and pitch it to somebody so they can come, you know, understand what I'm talking about. So I have one of those, but it's, I, I don't have it written down in front of me, but basically it's, um, it takes place in 1883 and we have this sort of, uh, um, superhero character called called the Wraith and he is um, kind of a Batman of the Old West um, master of disguise master of illusion um, he has a he has a partner uh, named Esther who is a former Salvation Army worker that he's sort of um, enlisted to be his Alfred if you will and uh, they have a very sort of um, tenuous relationship but during the, this whole process, there he's basically a monster hunter, right? He believes he's kind of on a mission from God to quote the Blues Brothers to kind of wipe out the, this this uh, supernatural evil that's that's in, encroaching on the land, right? And so the uh, there's a European monster hunter retired who has this amulet that, um, and he's hiding out in like this small town called Calamity, Arizona, right, in 1883, because this amulet is, is, if a werewolf gets possession of this amulet, they become invincible. Silver bullets don't work, you can't kill them while it's in their possession, right? So you got these werewolves that want the amulet, and the Wraith and Esther are trying to stop these werewolves from getting the amulet, and we don't really know who all the, we don't know who the werewolves are, all and we don't know uh, we don't know the the wraith is a very mysterious character with a dark past and you get um, it's very sort of ambiguous for a lot of the time is this guy nuts is he really this uh, you know supernatural being that that, that that God is sent to to destroy this evil or is he just nuts and you know Esther is like the sort of the 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 calming for or the the rational force and all this trying to figure this out from the inside you know is she doing the right thing is this guy really who he says he is you know and so you're dealing with all this kind of stuff while you're trying to you know track these werewolves and stop them from gaining this amulet and uh so it's a lot of fun it has a lot of elements that i like obviously it's got the monsters which i enjoy drawing it has it has a superhero element to it um and but then i it's you know it's a western in the sense that that's the landscape that it's set in, you know, that's the time period. Um, and so it, it, to me is artistically, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging me to get to do stuff that I, you wouldn't normally do in a regular comic book. I mean, most of my work has either been monster books or superhero books and this a straight superhero, you know, Superman flying people, you know, buildings tumbling, all that kind of stuff, but to actually go in and be able to draw the old West and, the type of characters you might see in a Sergio Leone movie, you know, is really appealing to me and really intriguing to me. So it's, uh, I think it has a little bit of every, everything for everybody. <clears throat> and oh, sounds, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, you can back it by, um, I don't know. Do we, you'll probably have a link in the, absolutely. The there'll be a link in the video description. Yeah. And, so uh, it's, it's live right now. It's been live for five days. It's uh, been trending really, really good. Um, you know, we opened in the first, less than 24 hours got to $30,000. Uh, and um, uh, so it's right now, I think it's pushing 60. So with less, we haven't even, it hasn't even been a week yet. So uh, we're real pleased and very happy with all the support we've been getting and um, hope that it continues. And the people that, you know, see this will at least go and check out the options on the, uh, the launch page or the, the uh, campaign page. Hey, I get, paid, I get paid Friday. When does it close? Oh, it's, we're like another three weeks. Days. 
21 <laughs> days away. So. 21 days. Okay, good. I'm, I'm in good shape. <laughs> So, Aaron, I do want to say congratulations on the success. Yeah. I think a lot of people have probably seen that there are people out there attacking your character because they don't agree with the way that you've promoted your book or a platform that was available to you that you went out there and, and got the word out there. I'm completely in favor of what you did. It's your yeah. it's your comic book. I think you should be able to market it the way that you want to define your customers. Roland, I, I think you've probably seen what's been said about Aaron lately. You I know him know. obviously better than I yeah. do. Uh, you've had a personal relationship. What did you think about the words that people were trying to use to describe it? You know, I I I, I posted something on on their Facebook page and, and just said, you know, all, all these people who are, are are posting these negative things about Aaron, they are haters. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I I could probably think of some worse words I can think of them, uh, I, but I won't say them. Um, like I said, I, I, I've I've known Aaron uh, for a bunch of years, probably more than he and I wish to uh, uh, confess. Um, but yeah, you know, Aaron's just one of these all around nice guys that, um, and I, I can't remember if we were we were live when I said it, um, but you know, I, I think this uh, this can the success of this campaign is phenomenal, and I think uh, you know, I think someone like Aaron deserves this success and i am i am so happy to see this happening for aaron because um yeah he's a super nice guy and anyone that says anything any different has just never met him um yeah thanks. so thanks i appreciate you saying that Roland. yeah absolutely um, <laughs> and, and i mean it so um, yeah, yeah so, I, I just i, I if think if you're one of those haters and you wanted to come here and say something rude about aaron you can go piss off we're not here for that we're here to celebrate the, the overwhelming success i think you've done a great job marketing the, the campaign looks like it's going to do probably more than you even anticipate and, listen uh, job well done. I, i'm going to put words in aaron's mouth and he's going to correct me if i'm wrong but here's 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 what i i think about aaron aaron's making a comic book that anyone can read. If if you voted for one party, you can read it. If you voted for the other party, you can read it. This is not a this is not a a a this is a comic book for entertainment. And I'm sorry, I know it's something larger, but I'm calling it a comic book, right? This sure. is this is a comic book that anybody can read. This is not a comic book that flies a flag that says, "Oh, you know, you can't read it if you if you don't support this way." Um, you know, Aaron's been in entertainment for a long time, and he's making entertainment for a, a lot of people. So those people that are that are hollering and fussing and 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 carrying on, they're just you know, hollering and fussing and carrying on. And we, you know, my kids were hollering and fussing and carrying on. We just ignored them. And that's what I think we, you know, that's what I think we got to do with, with all these, these people that are, 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 and I know it's harder. It's easier for me to say than for Aaron to say, cause they're, they're saying things about him. And I, I think that's the, that's the worst thing out of all this is they're attacking his character, which is just, which is, you know, shows you what kind of people they are. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it, it, it was a, it was a surprise. You know, I, um, when launching it, I knew there there probably might be some controversy involved with the you know the platform I chose to to launch from, but um, I had you know I had no no idea it was going to be like this yeah. and just and how you can you know how you could how you suddenly take on the responsibility for the actions of other people that you have no control over and don't even know <laughs> yeah. remarkable to me you know I would I I um. I, I made this analogy on my live stream and a lot of people liked it and um, that you have a bunch of, and I, I, this is, this hits home for me because when I was in college, one of my favorite things when I was in California in college was going to Ralph's and getting um, cherry vanilla yogurt. And they had this store brand that was cherry vanilla yogurt and it was freaking awesome. In fact, once all of our roommates discovered it and we all carpooled to the grocery store, it was a mad dash <laughs> to the dairy section because it was never enough cherry vanilla for all of us, you know, so it'd be, we'd be fighting, literally fighting each other to get to the cherry vanilla. So you have this group of people that love cherry vanilla ice um, yogurt, right? So they say, you know what, why don't we form a cherry vanilla yogurt community and we can talk about how much we love cherry vanilla yogurt and everybody, you know, you got thousands of people who become the cherry vanilla group, right? On, on the, uh, and then, but then a couple of these cherry vanilla guys, they go and they get into it with somebody else or they commit a crime or they do something horrible and they've hashtagged it 
cherry vanilla yogurt. And so now everybody's like, you have, you have to disband this cherry vanilla yogurt group because these two guys that also like cherry vanilla yogurt <laughs> said some horrible things and did these terrible things. And you're just as bad as they are because you eat cherry vanilla yogurt. And you're like, show me on, show me on this doll where Aaron hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, these people that are attacking me, I, I had one guy, you know, he had he had bought a copy of Garbage Man on uh, through Amazon, I guess, and he, he took a screenshot of how he refunded his money, I and then put that. a meme of guy of a guy throwing a book at, and he said, you know, I can't support anybody that belongs to a hate group and and does this 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 and this right, and I I just said, you know, obviously there's nothing I can say that's going to change your opinion. I said, but I have not experienced anything of what you're talking about. I don't know those three guys that used to eat cherry vanilla yogurt that are now in jail. You know, I don't know those people. I've never met those people. I am not responsible for the things they said and did. And to suggest that there's, you know, uh, obviously we're talking about Comicsgate, but right. to suggest that there is, there's not people that come and go with that hashtag. You know, there could be people that say, hey, I just discovered this and now, yay, I'm Comicsgate or whatever they had nothing to do with something that happened three years ago with a bunch of guys that or a few guys that went off the rails. Yeah. You know, you don't, it's the internet. You have no control over these people and what they do. There's a, everybody that I have come in contact with both professionally and as the fan base and the supporters have been super nice people that they have done nothing to me except be positive. I don't get it. You know, and if I see someone get out of line, like on my, my live stream or something in the chats, I call them out for it and go that yeah. we, we don't do that here. That's not cool. And, and I just, books. I just don't see it, you know, and I'm not saying there's not bad people out there. Obviously there's bad people out there. They're attacking me, but <laughs> just, you know, just your average, you can't just lump everybody into this big category. Like there is not a president of the organization who can say, well, you know, number five fifty six said this to so-and-so you're out. You know, that, that's not what it is. It's not a group. There's no membership cards. There's no, you know, mission statement. There's no, it's just, it's just people with like-minded, you know, comic book people that sort of get together on the internet once in a while for live streaming and to support, support books. It's not, yeah. it, you know, and I'll tell you, Aaron, I'm books. barely comfortable being responsible for my own actions because exactly. I know that I do stupid <laughs> stuff. I'm yeah. certainly not comfortable being responsible for your actions or Roland's actions nope. or anybody else's. And you shouldn't. My be. actions define who I am. Yeah. If I if I and go on I Bill, if I go on Bill Maher's show, right? Because I want to promote my movie or something. Obviously, he wouldn't have me on to promote a comic book. But if if I was promoting a movie or something, and maybe I don't even agree with Bill Maher at all at, at anything he says. But I'm I'm saying you know what this is a good it's platform. They invited me. I'm going to take advantage of it. And all about eyeballs. Do, do yeah. am I not responsible for everything that Bill Maher ever said? No, no, no. he's grown no. up. He's responsible for himself. Well, yeah, you exactly. know, it goes back to what you're talking about business, right? This is a business. Um, yeah, of course we love comic books, but this is a business and you've got a product in Wraith of God that you are trying to get out and, and make people aware of. Right. And when you choose platforms, you say, Oh, look, here's a platform that has, I don't know how many I don't know how many viewers he has, but it's a bunch, right? Here's they've got a whole bunch of viewers. This is an opportunity for me to go on here and promote my product so that these people can see it and become aware of it. And, and yeah. then Aaron knows. Yeah, go ahead, Ethan sorry. Van Skyver. You guys, you worked at the same company together. There's, uh, you know, yeah, Ethan's. He offered Ethan, you an opportunity, right? Ethan's a guy I, you know, I've known superficially over the years. I'm just getting to know him right now, really. And, uh, and I, and I, but I do know, you know, I know Art to bear really well. Mm -hmm. I know Andy Smith really well. We worked at cross gen together. Yeah. I know Graham Nolan Graham, pretty well yeah. because we went to, uh, we got to know each other when we ended up on a trip to Europe together to promote some Batman stuff. I'm getting to know Dan Fraga who I didn't know before, but just met and, uh, Billy Tucci who I, I've yeah. known superficially for a while, but another great guy. So here I am doing this show with these guys and they're all, you know, we're all comic skating. I mean, that's fine. You know, well, let me figure out what this is all about. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not in, I'm not saying I'm out. I'm just saying, let's find out. So, and these guys all turn out to be really, really good guys. I've never heard them say, you know, bad things about anybody except people that have said bad things about them, you know, which is, I guess is a normal human reaction, right? You're, and so then, 
you know, I go on Ethan's show a couple times and, you know, they, it gets, <laughs> I just talked about this last time, like, dude, you know, you guys are too raunchy for me, you know, but you know, they get raunchy. Yeah. And I was like, but that's, I got, that's your shtick. And I understand that, you know, I'm not saying don't, you know, change your show for me or anything. I'm just saying, understand that, you know, if I'm the guy sitting there not saying anything, it's because I can't participate in, you know, some of this stuff, but, and then, and then you look at the chats, right? What are people saying in the chats? And, you know, I'm looking for, where's the racism? Where's the misogynistic, you know, where's the, where's the anti-gay stuff? Where's all this stuff that they're being accused of? And I don't, I don't see any of it. Yeah. Right. And then those people start coming over to my live stream and they'll watch my live stream and stuff. And they're all very, you know, pleasant and they're all very well mannered. And I'm like, I don't see all this, this stuff that this hate group that this is supposed to be. So why wouldn't I associate with these guys based on, if you took away, if you took away the hashtag, right. And just said, we're, we're comic independent fans. Comic, yeah. We're independent comic people. There's, Everybody I've come in contact with there has been, you know, and I can't vouch for every single person's character in the world, obviously. I don't know what people do behind doors, but everything that I've seen and everything that we've been involved in in conversations and stuff like that, other than occasionally being critical of some stuff that's going on in mainstream comics that we don't like, but who doesn't right. do that? Right? I mean, Wes, that's your show, right? Is yeah. right? That's I mean, what comic <laughs> fans do every Wednesday and Tuesday. Right. That's exactly. right. Yeah. So, you know, so I see this and I'm just like, you know, you're afraid at first because you're like, oh, I don't want to be associated with this hate group, but then you find out they're not a hate group. And they're not really a group because there's no leader of the group per se, right? And so it's kind of like, and there's no organization to it. So it's like, these are just a bunch of people that, that dig comics. And if they want to, you know, if they want to hashtag Comicsgate, you know, that's fine. That's, that's, you know, so what? You yeah. know, it's just, it's just incredibly stupid. I've never seen anything like, I mean, I've seen it from afar, but I've never been involved in it like this. And you always kind of get the idea that, well, if some people are involved in that, they, they've done something to kind of stir the pot to get involved in that. And then suddenly you start finding out that, well, maybe they didn't, you know, maybe I, <laughs> yeah. it's like, I just did, you know, launched a book and I get up yeah. the next morning and it's like, I'm in the crosshairs, you know, I was going to get a t-shirt that said with a bullseye on it that said, throw tomatoes here, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. well, you if know, it wasn't it's like, you that day, Aaron, it would have been whoever else they decided yeah, that's to, true. they were going right. to attack. True. It's just, I just got yeah. lucky, I guess. It's 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 weird. It's like a, a sport nowadays with the the advent of social media. So, if there are there are viewers out here that would love to meet you in person and talk about Malibu comics, maybe some of the other <laughs> stuff you've done, or maybe Silverline. Yeah, I know you are going to be at Daytona Beach Comic Con. Can you That's give right. the viewers a, a few of the details on this? Absolutely, Daytona Beach Comic Con, in my opinion, is one of the best comic book shows in the area. Now, I know there's a great big box. Uh, 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 behemoth comic con in the Orlando area, but it's not a comic con. It's a media con, right? Uh, Orlando comic con is a comic con. If you like comics, this is where you ought to go. Superline will be there. We'll, there'll be about uh, 10 of us there. Uh, and so we're going to have us a, 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 a small little boothish area. It's not really a full booth, but it's like a half a one, right? And, uh, so you can come there and, and buy some uh, comic books and get some autographs and get some sketches. Well, there'll be a couple of artists there and talk to us about Silverline. And you can ask me any question you want to about uh, Malibu. I'll mention names off air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a, a, a lot of other uh, creators that will be comic book people that'll be there as well. But uh, uh, Silverline, who's uh, I'm worried about, right? So yeah, come on out. And, uh, it's, a, it's a two day show in Daytona. Uh, in Daytona. Well, it's not actually in Daytona. It's just south and west of Daytona in a, a little place called DeLand, but it's still Daytona Beach Comic Con. So you're close enough nice. to the beach. You can come buy some comics, then go hang out on the beach. I know you've got a couple of, of new crowdfunding campaigns you can't spill the beans about, but if people want to stay informed, where, where can they go? Is there a mailing list? Should they go to an official Twitter page? Is there a Facebook page? Where can they find these details when they do? All of do the release? above. Uh, we, okay. we, we've got it. Silverline's got a website, uh, silverlinecomics.com. We've got an official Twitter. Uh, we have an official Facebook page. We also have an email list that uh, if you're on the email list, you'll sometimes get a, a 24 hour advance notice of things before uh, the general public does we try to we try to let the folks on our email list know things in advance um, a little bit so that they can they can be ready um, instead of when we launch a Kickstarter we just make the announcement um, 
you know, to the, to the, to the world. But those on our email list, we try to give a little bit of a, of an advance notice so that they can, you know, there's only so many, when you have original art, uh, there's only one of those. And so those who are on our email list, we try to say, look, if you, this is a page you want, then you're going to have to act fast because, uh, you know, we, we launch tomorrow at noon or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, all the above, uh, is where you can, where you can find all the news. I do want to say thank you very much to Roland and Aaron for joining me today. Talk a little bit about history of Malibu comics. Aaron had some pretty funny stories working with Steve Gerber. Roland provided a little bit of perspective yep. about Malibu, and we got some good stories out of there as well. And certainly, uh, if you're going to be in Daytona Beach area, definitely go to Daytona Beach Comic Con. Find that silver uh, silver coin. I'm sorry, silver line. Silver, line. <laughs> sorry, silver coin is, uh, is that uh, Chip Zdarsky and all those guys. Silver line comics yep. booth. Go support the support those guys. Uh, meet Roland. Ask them some co- questions about Malibu Comics. And definitely, yep. if you haven't checked out Wraith of God on Indiegogo, Aaron's campaign is live. I think it might be the one for you if you like monsters and westerns and all kinds of superhero stuff. It's probably a good campaign. Hey, and uh, you know, people are people were not treating him very nice. Give him a chance and see if the comic books for you. Yeah, that's right. Just yeah. just give us a chance. That's all we ask. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> 